What's up, everybody? Starting on time is 11 o'clock, and it's Be More Training. So, uh, I am got the link out. We are waiting for Allie to jump on here. She got all her stuff together, and we're going to get started. What's up? What's up, my peeps? What's up, man? Hey. hey. <laughs> I am not Allie. <clears throat> getting everyone all situated. Getting everyone all situated. Look who it is. Woo. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me turn this all the way up. Boom. You close that door and there's more people come. Oh, <laughs> Mid drink. <laughs> Mid drink. Um, what's up, Allie? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing amazing. It's weird. I'm hitting the turn up button. Can y'all see that? And it's going down. I know it says Mac Miller, but still, that's interesting. Huh? We need to speak louder into the mic. Too. Um, no, I don't think it's you. It's weird. Uh, we're good to go. It, look, it just dropped on me. Either way, um, <laughs> either way, when you get a chance, just tell everyone who you are, what you do, how you do it, and all that good jazz, so then we can get started. All right. When I get a chance. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> no? Hear me? No. Yeah, you're good. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm Allie Garced. I am a realtor out in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, I don't normally have this background, but I just moved. I don't know if you guys can see the boxes. I hope you can't. I look like a hoarder right now. Uh, and so I've been a realtor for less than two years. I hit two years in aug this August. It'll be two years. I spent a decade in the Air Force. That was my uh, previous job before that, which was interviewing subjects, witnesses, and victims of felony level crimes for the Air Force. So I feel like that translated pretty well to interviewing people about buying homes. It was a much lighter, much lighter conversation <laughs> where I wasn't reading them their rights. So I really like this. Um, and I never really used a calendar too much during my decade in the Air Force. Um, so becoming my own business owner now, I realize, oh my gosh, like I really need a lot more, even more structure than what I had in the military. Actually, a lot more structure than what I had in the military. So the calendar was like the first thing that I really needed to um, learn. And it sounds like so boring, right? Like the calendar, like cool Google calendar, but it is so helpful. And I am willing to bet that you will learn something from today's Google calendar chat. Yes. Very good. <laughs> I was trying to hit unmute. Um, no, I mean, when you're speaking uh, Google Calendar and calendar and schedule language to me, that's that's my world. I love it. Uh, do you guys have anything that you guys want to get out of this class? You leave here, you're like, glad I learned that before she gets started. And anybody who's watching as well. But yeah. She basically said it. My biggest thing right now is my thing that this confused for me is being military prior. Yeah. I need even more structure now that I'm now mm. with the starting this business. So I'm just intrigued to see what's, you know, the best route that I can start. Yeah. To yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. it's interesting that even like in my prior career field in the military, where I you know, spent some time as an interim commander, there was, I still need more structure now than I ever did back then, you know? And it's so crazy to think about, like, I, like, Back then, I didn't need a calendar. In my mind, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30 were the meetings. That's it. Um, you know, like, so, but when you run your own business, you need so much more discipline than anybody in the military. Anybody in the military. So, yeah. Um, yes. I would Sorry. love. Oh, do you guys use Google Calendar or do you guys use Outlook? Google. You got a Google group here. Google group. The Google gang. Hell yeah. Google gang. Google gang. All right. Um, feel free Look, there's no one that sets in here. Everyone. Gang bang in Google. Say that again. Not, not, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Feel free to um, interrupt me as I go through. Um, 
because might as well, like, while you're on the topic, while we're on the specific topic that I go through, um, if you have questions, so that way you don't forget them, just, just feel free to interrupt me. Uh, and if you have any other questions at the end, I, this shouldn't like take too long. Actually, Ruben, how much time do I have? You have an hour, but you don't have to take all that time. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think I will. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I want to share my screen. Let me hit present. All right. Uh, and this is going to look crazy at first. It's all good. Screen and you guys feel free to um, look at your own calendar and follow along, like testing on your own, um, on your own Google Calendar. I have to hit a specific tab. This is the tab that I want. Okay. Do you see this craziness? And now I can't hear you guys. I think I feel like. Oh, I thought yes. Sorry, I thought you could see my my okay. big head. Yes, you're good to go. Oh, sorry. I either I either have this tab open or the other. Let me see if I can do side by side. Hold on. You're good. You're good to go whenever you want to get started. Okay, excellent. I'm just finding my own tab again. Um, all right. I'm just getting myself. I'm still situating. I should have used a dual monitor today. Eh. Okay. Well, I won't be able to see you guys. So whenever you guys want to interrupt, go ahead and just unmute. So calendar training, um, advanced tips. Well, I guess first we'll start with some basic stuff, which hopefully you guys know already that you need so much organization in this business. It, I, I found that I was able to handle maybe like two clients without truly using my calendar. But as soon as you get like, you know, more than that, you need to divide up your time between working like on the business versus like in the business, you know, showing homes versus analyzing how your, you know, outputs are are going. Um, and it can so easily overwhelm you. And I'm showing you guys my own personal calendar and it looks like a hot mess, but this is what works for me. <laughs> um, so I, I realized after I started juggling like two clients when I first got started that I needed to really rely on something that wasn't my own freaking brain. Uh, so I mainly rely on two things. One is the Google Calendar and the other is Evernote, more so for notes. However, I will be um, transferring like the tasks that I used to put into Evernote um, into Google now that they have like integrated notes over here, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, I'm sure you guys understand the importance of the calendar. What, number one is like to just to not rely on your memory. I literally, this is what we're going to go through today. Um, don't rely on your memory. Your memory will fail you because something is going to come up, you know, like you might think, uh, you know, Saturday, Saturday, I have a car appointment. I'm not going to forget it. But then something else happens. A buyer wants to view a home. You know, you have a listing presentation. Someone, you know, hit you up out of the blue saying, hey, I want you to list my house. Can you come over on Saturday? And that will mentally like take precedence over this other appointment that you already had. So I won't belabor that point. Um, how I organize my calendar. I love Google Calendar because you can switch the colors around. So for example, um, I use, this is just for me. And I would say when I first got started, I like totally overthought about like what colors to choose, right? I'm like, Ooh, do I want blue for business? And like, whatever, whatever. It, I spent way too long on that. Um, I probably spent an hour, which is way too long on that. So I chose red as the most, like, uh, like the, the most eye stopping color for appointments, whether they're like virtual or in person. So the 11 o'clock appointments are uh, the 11, the 11 o'clock, the red appointments are my no crap. I have to stop whatever I'm doing, like get ready for that appointment. Um, then in yellow, yellow is like one of my favorite colors. So I chose yellow for family and for vacation. So as you can see next week, I'm going to Chicago. Um, and every Tuesday I have, I try to 
to stick to this Tuesday afternoon schedule of taking time off. Like literally I will work in the morning and then the rest is for me to just F around. Um, does that always happen? No, but the rest always happens. So, uh, and then I have light blue for my business. So for example, like working on the business, not just like showing homes, like working on scaling the business. So um, every Thursday, or actually every two weeks on Thursday, I go into my Google business page and I either add a new photo, I just reply to some reviews, I ask people for reviews, um, something to just keep my Google business page somewhat fresh. Um, hey, can I ask you a question? So, can you hear me? I was going to say, can I ask you a question? Please. <clears throat> All right. So how do you even know what to put on the calendar and what should you put on the calendar first, right? Because there's so many things that we can get inundated with that how do you know what to put on the calendar, especially in the beginning when you're looking to start to form a schedule because, you know, this is something new to you or maybe something you've been doing for a little bit, but you want to get way better at it. How do you, I, I, how do you even identify to start doing these things? How do you even identify to what, you, what needs to be on the calendar? Yeah. Thank you so much for, for asking that question. Um, it, it's what is important to you, right? So one, you need to make money and two, you hopefully should be spending time with your family. So those like top two things, um, if you want, I would suggest, well, I suggest different things depending on where you are in the business. If you already have some business and you're, you're good with like a consistent check, um, then at that point I would say, focus on put your family stuff first. If you don't have any clients and you don't know when your next paycheck is coming, like you don't know when you're going to eat next, I say put the family off to the side um, and focus on the first thing that you put in your calendar is appointment setting. So typically how I schedule my day in general is in the mornings, I will have um, every single morning I try to set appointments. So pretty much like Ruben, every single morning I reach out to people and and, and I um, schedule appointments, go on appointments in the afternoon. So back when I first started, this was not a thing. It was empty. It was all white space, like this Sunday. So the first thing that I did was nine to 11. That's what they say is like the most, um, common times that people will respond back to you nine to 11. I reach out, I schedule appointments and get a little bit of a lunch break, whatever. Um, and then hopefully in the afternoon, I will go on those appointments from either those that I scheduled that day, the day before, a week before, what have you. Um, so that's like at a minimum, right? And then of course, any after that, like after you just schedule time literally to make appointments, um, then at that point, you can input then family stuff like, hey, or or personal stuff. I have to take my my car to the car shop. I have to go to the dentist appointment and um, I have a, you know, whatever, this is a fundraiser thing, um, a, an investing meetup, what, whatever it is. So, um, but at, at a minimum schedule time to even make those calls, make those texts, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to like lay out specifically up here. So for, I'll show you here, this is what I have every single day, um, weekday recurring. I go on my KB core and I do my tasks, which is the same thing that, um, Ruben, teaches. So, and he has multiple videos on that. So I don't need to like a step-by-step -step how to do it. I, at this point, I already know what to do. I'm just like KV core tasks. Um, and now I look at my downline. Did anybody else join, message them, invite them to stuff, let them know that I'm here for them. Um, that's what I do every single day during the week. Uh, and then Ruben, did that answer that, that question before I move on? Yes. Uh, also, oh. um, Oh man, I had follow up to that. Uh, um, dang it, it just I just lost it. But want, oh, out of all your tasks, what do you find to be the most important? So, meaning, like one thing, it sounded like you find time to find time. So you block in time to build out what the day may look like, or the week, or the month. So you need to time block time to time block. Does that make sense? Is that too? Too, too much, but you do that because that, that starts to step or you get to work on the business, right? You're not in it and you're not like going crazy. You get to get to work on it. The second thing, you know, since you have a lot up there and for anybody else who's like interested of how do I even get started on what, what what's the most important thing of your day? 
would you say that has to be time blocked? And you could choose two if you'd like. But what would you say is the number one or two? And for anybody who's watching, put it in the comments. What's your number one and number two? My number one that I have to do is my lead generation. Because without that, I'm not making any money. You know, like every day as an entrepreneur, you wake up unemployed. You know, you need to you need to work. So that is my important, my important thing specifically, you know, lead generation is huge. That's a whole nother topic. Um, specifically what I'm doing for lead generation is social media. So every single, um, morning I know, well, it's, it's not really morning cause I batch it, but I will batch out time a couple times during the week to write scripts and to, um, make the videos. So as soon as I do those things, like write a script, make a video, I send it off to an editor and that's, that's a whole nother process as well. But I make sure, you know, you cho choose whichever lead generation strategy you want to focus on, whatever has been working for you that you like, well, whatever has been working for you, <laughs> you know, whether or not you like it, it depends on. Uh, how much business you have. If you have a lot of business and you don't like doing that lead generation, then at that point switch. But if you don't have a lot of business and you don't like it, you still need to do it. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, so at that point, I I do take time off, like literally in the blue again, light blue is um, working on the business. So it's like, I schedule my own like thinking time, literally like after I'm done with the KV core task, uh, just think like what, what has been working? What has not been working? What do I like? What do I not like? Um, so how can I avoid having the same issues? What are my issues? So that is, uh, I do that monthly. Um, but again, to reiterate, when you're first starting out, schedule time to make appointments and then go on appointments. As long as I suggest making the appointment, scheduling time to make the appointments in the morning um, cause otherwise the day just gets ahead of you, you know, like on Sundays, wh whenever you have blank space, you will eat that up with something and you won't even realize that you killed a whole day. Like you won't even realize it. So, um, color coordinate and stick to it. Of course I have to, I have to practice what I preach with this yellow on Tuesdays, man, that rarely ever happens. Um, but the rest does happen. So think about a couple of different categories. So one is your family, which I already spoke about family or personal stuff, whatever color I think is your favorite color. Um, do one for appointments, do one for working in the business. Um, typically for me, that also, um, is a red color. Cause if I'm going to go travel to, you know, show a home that's, that's red. Cause that's an appointment. Um, and then a, a different color for working on the business. So that way, you know, it's it's time to put like my CEO hat on, not just the agent. hat. Uh, does that make sense? It does. Um, got a question. Another question. What, what yeah. have you what have you found to be something you've added to your calendar that you wish you wouldn't have something that you found doesn't serve any or not the ROI on whatever that activity is within that time isn't high. And it was something you had to pull out versus what's your greatest thing you focused on. What's something you needed to pull out uh, after actually executing it within that time. Mm, those are good questions. What did I put on my calendar that I should not have? Um, I don't know. Cause if, if I realized that, so there will be tasks and I'll give you an example. There will be tasks that you realize like this task specifically, I have not done this task and it's been on my task for, sorry, this one, it's been on my calendar forever for like maybe seven months, eight months. Um, I purchased this, like, I don't know, $14 course for like how to make better con better video lighting, all the things I have not even logged in. So, ever so I ended up making a recurring, um, recurring event instead of like continuing to just like drag and drop. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Um, so once you find yourself doing that, maybe it's, it's either one, not all that important. Um, or two, like it, it actually is a priority that you need to turn into a different color. If I turn this into red, I know that I would do it, but I haven't yet. So it's probably not all that important, you know, like I've been doing okay. So whenever I have some extra time on a Saturday, 
maybe I'll get around to it. So I don't know if that answered the question. No, it did. I mean, I definitely have those two and eventually I'll just delete it off my calendar. Um, but also what I would do is ask myself, you know, if it's, if it is a priority, but I don't want to do it. Maybe I should be doing it. Maybe someone else should be doing this for me. Right. Um, and that where so it gets done. It is a priority, but you don't, you're not going to be the one who's going to do it. If you're not in the, the financial space to do it, you just need to kind of suck it up buttercup and do it, you know? Um, but if you are, and you do have a little bit, uh, that maybe you could have somebody else do it. Cause this right here, maybe I would get a VA to watch it and send me the bullet points. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to sit maybe and watch the whole thing. And maybe that's your backup. I haven't asked enough questions to figure out what that is, but have somebody else watch it or somebody who already has it and just send me the, the bullet points. And then that I would be, it would be much easier to operate on because per bullet point I could add to the calendar or maybe a stack of them I can add to the calendar to just execute on, you know, just give me the target and I'll be able to execute on it uh, somewhere within the calendar. But yeah, it did help. Yeah. But that, that, that would be my takeaway with that. Yeah, no, that that's a really good point. Um, and one of the last points that I, I was going to make is sharing this with your family, sharing this with your assistant. Um, because as they say, like, if you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant and that will hold you back a lot, a lot. Um, so as soon as you feel like you might need some help, hire it out and it, because it, hiring it out seems like so daunting at first, if you've never hired somebody else to do something for you, but it doesn't have to be a full-time salary job. You know, you could take it by week by week basis. Um, or task by task basis too. Like, hey, can you watch this course for me and give me the highlights? Um, you know, it, everything is like just so negotiable and like malleable into whatever you need for your business. So take advantage of that and hire out quick. So yeah, we definitely, that, so I was just going to say, because we have a question, but we've definitely hired out per task, you know, just get this activity yeah. done at this amount and uh, we'll see if it works. If it works, then maybe we bring you, you know, on or whatever that looks like. But what was your question? Well, I guess it was more about like the, the motivation and discipline to mm -hmm. stick to the calendar that you create for yourself. Like you create a calendar for how you want your day to go and what you want to get done. But when motivation and discipline fail you, like do you change yourself to your calendar or change your calendar to fit you? Did you hear that? No. Dang it. She worded it so nicely. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, you built a calendar to fit your personal and your professional life. What would happen if your discipline and your motivation has failed you uh, and you haven't executed on any of it? What do you do? Is do you it, change your calendar to fit you or do you change yourself to fit your calendar? Do you change your calendar to fit you or do you fit yourself to fit? Do you change yeah. yourself to fit your calendar? Did, did that make sense? Is, she said it way better yeah. than that. I I would ask a question in return because I, I feel like the the answer that I give might not even help. Um, is this about like you specifically? Because I'd love to just dive deep on that. Is that about you specifically? Kind of like I create a calendar for myself for like how long am I going to go and in the best. Like, are you are you finding that you have trouble holding, like following your calendar? Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. Okay. So I, cre I, I created a, a schedule for myself for personal and professional for how I want my day to go to make myself the most productive and best version of myself. But sometimes I find it's just so easy to just swipe, you know, right to left to get it off my phone. And then, you know, I'm at a point where, okay, I didn't do it. So then I fail. So am I, should I change myself to fit my calendar? Like really rely on or or how do you do that or do you change your calendar to fit your personality you know what i mean what yeah what tasks are you wiping away and not doing getting up and working out in the morning <laughs> what was that um, getting up to work out in the morning or or even just uh, like because i'm a mom of two under two and i'm also trying to do the education of a new agent so it's like sometimes you know, I've built in like mom time and work time, but you know, sometimes I just swipe and I decide to, you know, spend more time with my, my baby instead of working or, you know, just like anything really. Like when I get down to having to do social media stuff, which I absolutely hate, um, or, um, having to do the, really anything, I guess. 
Like, like yeah. how do you motivate yourself to, to do those tasks or, or vice versa? Do, do you, do you find yourself uh, swiping and also not doing tasks that uh, generate business or do you find yourself only doing like swiping away, ta- deleting tasks, like going to the gym? Well, so right now it's a little tough because I just started doing this like a few days ago. So, so far I've been doing how, what I wanted to do. Um, and then I'm a brand new agent. So all of my time is focusing on the curriculum right now. So I'm not doing any lead generation activities as of yet, but I will. Okay. And I know myself, yeah. know that I'm going to have an issue with, things that I don't want to do. Yeah. Then, okay. Yeah. So then in that case, I would say maybe the gym in the morning is not the right fit for you. Maybe, maybe cause you're too tired or maybe, you know, it could be just yeah. as, or as easy as going to sleep early as easy as, you know, like it's easier to say that than actually do it, but just going to sleep earlier and then making that gym time that you already scheduled out or maybe yeah. gym in the middle of the day during your lunch break is better or maybe gym, you know, just gym at a different time or a different type of exercise. Cause if it take if you know, you have to go somewhere else far away to go to the gym and it's in the morning, maybe that's not beneficial. So it's, it's, you know, it depends on where the location is too. So if you know that you're going to be, I don't know, having lunch appointments somewhere else, like near the gym, you know, it's scheduling it. And I say that because Tucson is just so big. Um, it's surprisingly big. So I need to schedule my day around where, what part of town I'm even at. Um, so that, you know, maybe just scheduling the gym on a different, t- at a different time would help. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, you'll get into your groove too. Just like for anything, really, you have to like move stuff around. Cause, um, you know, Ruben gets up like early as shit. I don't get up that early. You know, like I, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> I used to, but I don't do that anymore. It doesn't, it's not what works for me. Um, yeah. So I will say, that was a great point that you made because I was coaching a top team at another firm a few years ago and the team leader had the same challenge. They were like, I want to work out. I just don't know. I try, I like, I keep swiping it and she did what Ali said. I was like, well, why don't you just push it somewhere else on the calendar? Sometimes you don't even think about that. You know, there's a thing that goes, if you erase it, replace it. And so she replaced it at a different time and she, it was, it worked for her. It was just one of those quick little mind shifts on that. Um, But I thought that was interesting that you coached her on that. And that was exactly what helped the other person as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, right? So. Um, it worked better back in the day for me to wake up at four and hit the, and leave at four thirty. That's no longer a thing. My daughter's growing older. She's getting up earlier. Right. And I want to be there for all that. So now I have to leave at seven thirty or closer to eight because daycare starts at eight at the gym. And that's when my daughter, she comes with me, right. When she's not in school. So it, you, the whole thing will adjust and move. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a fluid thing depending on what you yeah. find works for you and what doesn't. And yeah. I know when I when my kids go to daycare, like I'm gonna move my workout, I'm not gonna wake up at four forty five anymore. Like, yeah. that's well like you see this room right now, right? We have four people in here. School's out, right? So a lot of people are watching this from home because they got their kids and all that. So it's just one of those it's one of those things and it will fluctuate and it will move and blah 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 blah. But yeah, totally. Yeah. Were you gonna say something? No, I mean I have to get up at four during the school year. Yeah. Because my kids go to school at like six. Yeah. And then I'm I'm in the gym. I don't want to be in the gym while they're on the bus. So I'm like, and then if I, it would be more natural for me to go to the gym at ten or you know midday or something like that. But I can't interrupt my day. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I think the 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 thing we learned here is just don't have kids. I think that's what we're all. <laughs> I guess I'm on a roll then. That's all for it, back here. Um, okay. uh, yeah. So we love our kids. Future, our kids who see this in the future, we love you. Um, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Good. Keep going. You're doing great. Another. Th- Okay. Another thing I want to talk about is me being in Arizona, not on the East Coast. I feel like everything. Originally, I'm from New York. So maybe this is why I feel this way, but I feel like everything revolves around East Coast time always. So 
And Arizona does not do daylight savings. Apparently now the, the country isn't going to do that either. I don't really know. But either way, as soon as the day, the time changes, you know, the time zone changes, it messes me up every single time because Arizona, sometimes we are like two hours earlier or later than, um, than East Eastern time. Sometimes we're three hours later. It just depends on what time of the year we're at, which is so confusing. So I just added another uh, time zone, you know, like my time zone, it, you know, it's currently eight 30. Um, and that way I know like exactly what that is on Eastern time since pretty much majority of the people I talk to are all Eastern time. So instead of me asking my, my calculator or calculator, like my, my phone Siri, like, you know, to, to when I'm setting up appointments for podcasts or for any meeting, really, um, it's an easier way to make sure that I'm getting the time correct. <laughs> so I added this and that's like super easy too. just like a super quick thing here. Um, you can, when you go to your calendar, you can just click these three dots over here and go to settings. And, oh gosh, that's not, I think I clicked something else here. Yeah. So you go to settings and you can add, you can set your primary time zone. Um, you can export your calendar make it available to the public if you want to put this on a website or something like that. Um, share it to your family, to your assistant, uh, and they can, and you can share a specific level of what type of, you know, how much information do you want them seeing? Uh, do you want them only seeing that you're busy? Like literally at that, at that point, um, if you're sharing it with an assistant, but you don't want to let them know, you know, whatever you're doing, uh, you can say, you can click this and it will literally show them boxes that just say busy, busy, busy. Um, or they can see all the details or they can make changes to the events if you want to give them a higher level of, um, you know, more responsibility in your business. Or they can straight up be able to manage and share it. I'm accidentally clicking these things. Um, okay. What what was this before? Here, see all details, see all that. Okay. Um, event notifications. This is important to me because I will make an event, you know, I'll create an event on my calendar and then I will just forget it until I need to come back to it. So 30 minutes is what I use as well as the one minute notification because you will be surprised or I don't know, maybe you know this already between 30 minutes, you know, getting that pop up saying, Hey, your event, your event is in 30 minutes until that time. Usually I'm doing another task and I will forget. So I do need that one minute uh, notification. You can also do it zero minutes. So you could just like log in immediately. Um, I'll have one minute of prep, you know. Um, and same thing for all day events. So for example, you saw my events. Oh, I have to go back. But like whenever you have to renew your license, like for me, that's an all day event because I'm. it's at some point during this week, I have to renew my license. I have to finish my CE, whatever it is. Um, or I'm on vacation and going down here, these are, um, hopefully you guys have seen this before. If, if not, well, you're seeing it now. So the daily agenda, this is like, I'm going to start down here. Daily agenda, your calendar can email you, um, everything of what you had to do. So it depends on, uh, whether you check your email first or whether you check your calendar first. Some people don't check their calendar until later. Uh, the first thing I do is check my calendar. Like my calendar is always up way before my email. So I there's no point of me getting an email sent to me because I check my calendar. But if you are an email checker first, maybe put this uh, as the email setting. So in that way you can get a response or an email every single day and it'll let you know what you need to do that day. Similar to KB Core and the way that they like email you your tasks and all the people you need to call that day and you know whatever. Um, and then going down here, yeah, just removing calculator or calendar. I keep saying calculator. So that is like time zones and reminders. Very importante, I think. Um, you can also create if you use your Gmail as like your business email, or really if you use a Gmail at all, um, you can turn an entire Gmail email into an event. Um, I don't use my Gmail. I should have, but at this point, oh well. Um, you can pull up like your your email, and if you're on a computer now, you can try doing it. Um, you can pull up your email, and 
in the top right, there should be like these three dots similar to this one over here. And you can literally just click these three dots and then click create event. That by creating that event, that will automatically take all of the threads from that email, like all the written message and put it in the description of that event. And it will automatically invite though everyone on that thread. So if you want to take an email and only internally make it an event for yourself, like, hey, I need to work on this like by myself, like not with anybody else on the email, um, make sure that you delete the other people that are invited. But that's a really good way to copy and paste an entire task for you. Because I also use my calendar for tasks. The last color that I didn't talk about was green. And here green, um, green is my default though. So sometimes it'll be like flights and stuff like that. But for example, here I have little like tasks. So I, whenever I think of something, I immediately put it somewhere, right? And that somewhere is my calendar. Um, so, and I put it at a time that I'm free. So let me go back here. Um, Anyway, you, you get the point. Whatever task it is, like, oh, order Instacart, I ran out of eggs. Or, or order, you know, whatever, to text this person, how are you, since, you know, their dad had surgery. Um, stuff like that. I put it in as, a, as, a, as an event. However, now I'm going to be switching it to tasks because Google Calendar is making the switch to, like, making a bigger push to tasks, which, which I'll get into a little bit uh, later. Do you have any questions so far? Did I lose anybody? I just asked that. Um, so I'll ask again, any questions so far? So far, so good. Um, okay. I had a question earlier, but we'll keep going because uh, this is, okay. this is, I will, I, I have a suggestion. Yeah. And I think more of when you say the, um, the task of people, other people, not not yourself, meaning, you know, uh, I, like I have a grocery list that I keep. It stays there every Sunday. I add to it. I take off of it, whatever, and then I'll move it to the next Sunday. Um, I have that type of thing. But in terms of like a task of person, like like you were saying, somebody had surgery, make sure they're OK. What are your thoughts on instead of adding it to a calendar, you add it to the task of that person that's in your CRM? And if they're not in your CRM, Maybe that's the push that you need to go ahead and add that person to your CRM to be able to add that task. So in the morning when you're lead, re, lead gen and you're reaching out to everybody, it's already set in that lead gen time and taken off your calendar. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I um, I love that idea. If that works for you, that's like that's ideal, I think, um, as opposed to me putting it in my calendar. The the reason I don't do it is because I. This is an issue between me and, and KV Core mobile app. I'm always getting logged off and I don't want to have to re and, and I'll put my password in. And I have to reset the password every single time. I don't know why. Um, so I have issues like getting into my CRM. If I had super easy access on the go on my phone to input that task into, you know, that person's, you know, file, um, that's what I would do for sure. Because every single morning, KV Core emails me. I have that set up where I, it tells me, Specifically, who I need to reach out to and about what, what to say. Yeah, and most people do, you know, at least in the beginning, what I've found, and that, because that's what I did too, right? Is I would add when I should follow up with somebody in my calendar. That's how I started out. And, and usually that's, that's how people come to us, anyways. They're, they, that's how they do things. I was just adding that suggestion here. And I will say, if it's somebody's birthday, I don't know, they graduated today, whatever it is from anything. Um, and I see it on social media. I do make the note in my calendar later today that only gets transferred to the next morning where I input them into my CRM and then set the follow up one year out. Hey, happy one year anniversary or whatever that is. Um, yeah. So it does get it does land in my calendar first, but then it the next day it immediately immediately leaves my calendar back into that CRM. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Calendar uh, or rather occurring events like that all day. I do those as all day events here. Like she, Danny's birthday is coming up um, with the year. So that way I know how old she is every year. Uh, instead sure. of just like Danny turns 37 and it's like the year 2037 and she, you know, whatever. 
Um, so um, Danny's birthday is at all birthdays of all my sphere. Danny has is not a past client. She she will be a future client, um, and people in my downline. So um, that or like any major events like close of escrow, like once they once your clients purchase a home, have that as a recurring event on what I do is on the day of, it's like, say they close uh, June 14th. Perfect. Right. Um, I'm going to create an event, close of escrow for Ashley. And that's going to be an annual event. And um, not only do I do that, well, I would save it, but I don't want to confuse myself. Um, Not only do I put it on the actual date of closing, but I actually do, um, I have, I would do it in the beginning of June. So the first day, here, let me find one where I actually have it. May 1st. Um, oh, my assistant's been taken. Hold on. <laughs> let me find, maybe April 1st. What I have done is, where is it? Oh, man. This is so weird. Okay. So on the first of the month, that's when I put all of the birthdays that are coming up. So um, that is how my assistant, uh, that's how I make things easier for my assistant to send out the cards. I'll shoot out a text, um, you know, on the day of their birthday, but my assistant on the first of every single month, she'll see the the birthdays of every everybody's birthday coming up to send out the the cards. Um, and I even tell her, like, do it in ugly handwriting so it looks like it's actually coming from me. <laughs> um, but I don't know where the birthdays went, so I'm going to have to reach out to her. <laughs> I'm a little worried right now. <laughs> um, so let me go back to where I was. Oh, okay. I want to go into shortcuts because this will save you time, um, like, quite a bit. So um, whether you're using Outlook or Google, uh, we're the Google gang here, though. Um, these are the shortcuts. Did you know that literally if you have this calendar open by clicking, by doing the question mark button, you will find out what all of the shortcuts are. So I broke them down for you here. Um, cause it's, it's like a hassle to go from like, you know, page to page, whatever, whatever. So if you, again, you have to be like clicked into the Google calendar, but whatever period you're looking at. So for example, here, I'm looking at a week, week-long period. You can see that right here. Uh, if you just click the, the button P for previous, it'll show you the previous week and previous. What I did, what did I do last week? When did I last meet with, you know, Fanny, whatever. And you, you can do the opposite. You can go forward in time by clicking N for next, next, next period, next period, next period. Are you just the letter? Okay. I'm literally just hitting the letter N oh, okay. for next. I didn't know if it was like yeah. control P or question mark P or something. Nope. Okay. Yeah, nope. Just the letter P for previous, just the letter N for next. Um, and say you want to go far in advance. You don't want to go week by week because we want to find something out in December, right? So at that point, you can literally just hit, this would change this or this style because right now we have week, which if you don't have a week, you can press the letter Click the letter W for week, and it will show you week. Or you can click, uh, I think it's is it T for today, and it'll show you just today. You can click M for month, and it'll show you the entire month. Or, like I said, we want to go into December, so click Y for year, and bam, you can easily scroll, and then and then you can do um, N for next. Next, next, next year, next year, previous year, P for past, previous, previous, previous. Here we go. Does that make sense? Are you guys like following along? Were you guys able to do that? Yes. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Um, no, nah, pretty easy stuff. Yeah, cool. And then, of course, like say you're back into your, um, the way that you like looking at it, or say you don't you don't like a mixture of whatever they have as defaults. Um, you can also just do like, you can highlight a couple of days here on the left side. You can just highlight. I only want to look three days at a time. Bam. 13th through the 14th. That's all you will see. I want to know, you know, maybe yesterday, today and tomorrow or today, tomorrow and the day after. Um, so you can just highlight that there. If you want to search for an event, 
you can just hit the what is this backslash or forward 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 slash forward slash and that takes you up here and you can search when is amber's birthday um, or you know whatever it is you can search whatever you're looking for um and another random tip in case you are not near <laughs> your calendar for some reason and all you have is just internet connection you can go on cal like for calendar cal.new and it will bring up your calendar at that point you can just add another event or you know do whatever you need to do so in case for some reason you don't have your google calendar as uh, very easy to get to, you know, bookmarked like I have here. It's my first thing. It's, I always have this up. Um, then you can just click, you can type in cal.new. Another, another thing to keep in mind also is like holidays. Um, you can add, you know, I have like the, the U S holidays, uh, or, or what is it like North American holidays? I didn't know this, but, um, you can also register to have here where is it um have other events pop up too in case uh let me find it okay settings for other oh these are just settings integrate calendar is it integrate calendar I should have done I, I clearly don't do this because I don't really care about sports but the point is there's a like a whole like sports calendar where you can e literally put all the games into your calendar so say you have a couple of clients that are I don't know Vikings fans so you could be like hey check out that game yesterday or whatever sports people talk about I don't know um, so I found that important in case you have clients that do sports that do sports ball so <laughs> Um, and the last thing which I already spoke about is sharing your calendar. Um, so it's, I find that helpful, um, especially with the assist, with the assistant, my spouse, not a calendar person, not at all. So I've invited her. She don't care. She's like, Hey, just tell me what's happening on Saturday. I'm like, okay, I've told you four times, but okay. <laughs> uh, so it takes a while to get into, but I love it. Any, any questions? Well, how do you get so my go sports sports <laughs> go sports um so that's just generalizing all of them at that point uh but you uh how do so our household you know my wife is definitely on a calendar and a schedule um and we if i want something planned this friday or if i see something coming up then i tell her and is it interrupting anything that we already have on the calendar you know and it's vice versa so if she wants to do something with me she's like yo what do you got this day this time can i do this 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 or can we do this 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 and if i'm like oh snap this is going on then it's a no but we do very or if i don't have anything then boom she's in the calendar and she's the one thing at that point you know and nothing else will then interrupt that time. So how do you bring, I definitely see the benefits of it within uh, our relationship, but do, if the other spouse, and this isn't, you know, um, you to go then stop this and then go talk to her and like, bah, but like what, how do you get a spouse on for somebody who doesn't necessarily see the benefit of it or or want to bring it into their life? Like, how do you bring, how do you bring them on? How do you see them? How do you make them see the benefit? It's the question of the day, Ruben. Um, <laughs> I have, I have tried. <laughs> um, I've even gone to like stuff that, you know, when we're across town and we had uh, an appointment, uh, that sounds so like formal to say, we had an appointment. We we're like gonna go do whatever together. Um, so I'm like there, I'm like, hey, where, <laughs> where are you at? Oh, I forgot. Uh, it's it's and again i feel i feel like it goes back to more of like a um entrepreneurial mindset versus a w2 like i i truly stand by that uh and i don't know um maybe it's just trial by error i i really don't know yeah but for those that do for like families that are big on calendars oh my gosh like man the world is your oyster. You can plan anything out. And like, you, it, that's locked, you know, like you can't, there are no other conflicting issues typically. 
Yeah, yeah, 100%. No, totally. Um, do any of y'all have any challenges with that or what that looks like or blah, blah, blah? I just tell people, I mean, I'm not from here, but I just tell people, like, hey, my boss is my calendar. Mm. So I don't work for anybody, but my calendar tells me. Oh, I want to hit on one more thing, too. Yeah, well, his, his, uh, his calendar is his boss. He doesn't work for anybody but his calendar. <laughs> his calendar runs the show, which yeah. I totally, man, 100% believe in, right? It's That is every Without yeah. that, people are like, man, how do you remember this? Or how did this? Or how do you accomplish? Like, do all these things. I'm like, my calendar, it, just, it tells me where to go and who to meet and what we're going to talk about and all that. That's my brain. If that falls apart, you're about to see the dumbest dude on earth. <laughs> Because I, I just can't operate without it. Um, but go go ahead, drop what you were going to say, and then we have a question uh, from a Facebook person. Yeah. So the other thing that I forgot to mention is these dark blue. Uh, it's Again, it's only really going to be dark blue, I think, on my calendar. Uh, but there is an, a free AI tool that you can integrate with uh, your Google Calendar. Maybe Outlook 2? I'm not sure. Um, it's called... Uh, re I think it's called reclaim.ai. I was like messing around with this a couple of days ago. Um, so here you can you essentially make an account again. It well, it's free. I think Ish. I don't know what the pricing is. If the, if there are any like upgrades, um, I think for me it's not. I think I'm probably going to delete it, but I'm sure for others um, it will work for them. So you can. Um, you, you create an account and you create like what industry you're a part of what, and I clicked sales and it gives you like examples of what to block out time for that can be changed to a different time. So for example, the, um, this might help with your gym time. I forget your name, but this, this, this might help where, um, you, there are like pre already like preset different like actions or tasks to do every couple of days, weeks, months, whatever, um, that you can click what is important to you. And that way it'll find empty spots in your calendar and fill it up. So all these dark blue are just empty spots in the calendar that they filled up. Um, so, and this is, I have not been, uh, I didn't type anything in here. So you can, you can see here, Reclaim has blocked off this time for Allie to catch up on a habit. So it keeps it like general. So that at that point, you know, I can edit this and be like, you know what, this instead of check-ins, I want this to be my gym time. And I actually want to schedule a little bit longer than that. You can edit it, um, but it'll find empty spots in, in your calendar to do so. At that point, you just have to like, you know, go ahead and do it. So for example, I clicked another one that I thought would, would be important to me, monthly metrics review. Because... Um, Previously, I had this as a light blue task working on the business, but it's cool to have something, um, you know, already fill in the the white space in your calendar. And if someone books an appointment with you, because I also have Calendly, so whenever someone books an appointment with me and they book during this time, this will move. So the, the appointment takes precedence, right? Like your 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 business takes, um, you know, first first dibs and this will just move around to whenever you have available again. That's sick. So it's a, I did it's, not know that. Yeah, That's it's cool. a cool tool. Um, uh, shoot, I forgot it. See, this why I need a calendar. I should have put it in my calendar what I was going to ask. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I had something I was going to say to that, and I don't remember what it was, but that's super cool, man. I, I, oh, that's what it was. So we have calendars as well for, for our team, for – yeah, any of you, we have a KB Core calendar that you can, it just automatically uploads into your calendar if you desire to use that. And there's like a, uh, like a habit building calendar that we've already, that we already have that I, we got from Shareholder Summit that we just, now it's part of our onboarding. So if you want that too, and you want that type of structure and put those calendars like habit building and KB Core lead generation follow-up stuff. You could do, and it's and it's even got links in it, two videos to teach you how to do X task if you're not sure how to do it. It's crazy, so that's cool. And then we will move to this, which is do you or or and do you and your spouse collaborate your calendars with each other? Is it effective? So it's, we kind of touched on this, but do you, do you want to say it again and just? <laughs> or, yeah, how do you and I, I also 
I also wonder too. So my wife, she's still active duty Air Force. Um, she's an Air Force pilot, and so all military. I feel like use Outlook. Um, I actually don't know how to integrate the two of them while sharing calendars. I'm sure there's a very simple way, but either way, she uses her calendar only for work. And during her work hours, I'm also working, so it doesn't really matter. Um, on the weekends, we, you know, we just hit play it by ear pretty much. It's, it's, you know, we, we, I don't know. So it's, I think that's another thing between like, just specifically my spouse and I, um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it, it would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is so, let me just back. I'm going to slowly back out of that conversation, but uh, I will say, you know, something that's helped us now, this is on the calendar. So maybe you meet with your spouse one time, this for anybody and everybody. And you say, Hey, listen, I'd like to meet at least once a month or twice. I'd like to meet once to do a date night. We do whatever we want, have fun. Let's, let's have, let's just enjoy ourselves. And then the second one is I would like to meet and discuss what your vision is, right? Like, cause you know, people still listen to YFM, right? What's in it for them. And if you, if you approach it with like, I, I want to help you get to whatever your ultimate goals are, what your vision of this relationship looks like, what your vision of life looks like. And we're going to meet once a month, discuss it and see how close we are to it. The cool thing about that is the vice versa is you get to then talk to them about your vision, where this relationship is going, where your goals are going. And one of those things could be, I would like for us to be better with the calendar. And then you insert it. So maybe it's not a level one, you know, it's a, it's a level three or four that question comes in, but only by bringing in them of what's going to benefit them in meeting in the first place. So maybe it's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think of it as like a long game too. Like if you have a spouse that isn't interested in a calendar, doesn't need a calendar, you know, and I understood it. Like had I still been in the military, I wouldn't need a calendar. Why? You know? Um, but one thing that we do regularly and it's already like, we already know what day and time we're going to do it, um, is our net worth review every month, every single month we look at our net worth, our income, our income, our expenses. Um, just watching it grow. So I think, but also that benefits her too, right? She's like, Hey, this is, she likes it. So little by little, you know, I'm like, Hey, I sent you an invite. <laughs> She's like, I already know that we're going to do it. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a long, it's a long-term play, but also I haven't really put too much emphasis on it. So um, yeah, it's, it'll be classical conditioning. I'll, I'll condition her. Yeah, 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 I hope yeah. she never watches this. Yeah, yeah. She won't. <laughs> Um, it's got everything to do with calendars. She won't, she won't watch it. Um, don't now watch her slap the madness out of me the first time I meet her. Um, but no, so I think it's funny because there's a quote that goes, activities fill the, the time allowed. And you mentioned not yes. taking up the hour. And we have two minutes left. You've, you've literally filled the activity within the time allowed. Um, but any, any last questions? Any Google questions? I did put hashtag nerd edition. Because, you know, you got to have a little bit of nerd in you to jump on this, too. Um, but what 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 do you want to add? Is there any, any last things you'd like to add before jumping off here? Um, I re the biggest thing for me, like, is making sure that you stick to it, you know. And, and whenever you find yourself struggling, one, you might just be tired. Especially if it's like a morning activity, you might just be tired. So just literally just go to bed earlier. Um, take a sleeping pill if you have to like go to bed early just to try it see like does this activity work for me in the morning do people respond back right because if it's your lead generation time that is the number one thing i think is if you're a new agent that is the one thing you should have on your calendar i think seven days out of the week um not just like five days so and then just tweaking your calendar is always going to be tweaking like always it's just like a, a business plan it's just like you know anything else so you're going to make little tweaks here and there uh, do what works for you. Not not everyone is a morning person. Maybe you're the type to reach out midday and hopefully try to catch them during their lunch break. That works too. You know, just try it out. And uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you had your name as <laughs> my name, I guess. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's really it. Your your boss says, as an entrepreneur, your boss is the calendar that you created. Totally agree. I appreciate you taking the time. It is twelve. Literally just hit twelve o'clock. 
So I appreciate you uh, being on time, hitting it on time, and then giving us value and, and answering our questions and all that good jazz. So uh, yeah, till next time. I don't know if you have any other classes coming up. This maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, any more be more trainings, but definitely follow Ali because she's constantly dropping videos and knowledge and all the good things. Um, watch her and, and get something uh, from the value that she delivers. So thank you again, Ali. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Nice meeting Adios. you guys. Bye bye. See ya. Bye bye.